All right, get back on this bike here. <clears throat> we get this primary cover put on here. I took off the starter plate here, which is all chewed up. So, you see how it's all eaten away and ovaled out. Not a round hole anymore where it goes around the starter. So, I'm going to go ahead and replace that with a new one right here. We're going to have to glue this all in here because it's so eaten out underneath here. It's all worn real heavily under here. The chain. And starter housing is the same way here. See, that's all eaten out also, real thin. So I'll have to go ahead and seal all this up in here. And we'll stick this all up in here. I gotta pull the battery box back out on the other side so I got access to put the starter in here. I did my uh, motor sprocket check. I got the alternator put in here. Got my regulator all mounted up in here. Did all that. The uh, on this Ultima case, the regulator hits up in here, so I had to bend the bracket slightly forward. So this is actually bent forward about 10 degrees. But it does hold the plug in real nice, which is good. Hard to see in there, but yeah, where's it at? There we go. So you can see how the reg yeah right. You can see how the regulator holds the plug in, so you don't have to worry about the plug coming out. So and we got that all up in there. Fix that. A lot of the wiring issues have been fixing too. Other things on the bike. So we're getting back to doing our primary cover now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this all together here. And then I'll show you what that looks like. We'll have to bolt the cover up on here and then put the starter from the back side. So I'll show you some pictures when I get that further along. Okay, I went ahead and gooped up the uh, O-ring loop right through here. And right here where the starter goes. And I got Loctite on the studs already, the bolts, and I'm using a lock tab here for doing all this. So Once I get this on in there, then I'll get the starter buttoned up really quick while this goop is semi-wet and try to do it in one quick shot so everything has a chance to seal. Okay, I got the inner primary bolted up onto here. And our nuts in there. We're using a lock here instead of safety wire like Harley does it. So that's all up in there. I just got done gooping up all these pieces here on both sides. So I'm gonna let this get a little bit tacky here. And we we'll go ahead and bolt it all up. And try to get all up in there in one quick shot. I had to take the battery box out on this side, and you can see that one's all gooped up up inside of there. So we'll go ahead and continue putting this all together up in there. Show you the next shot. Okay, we got the starter housing adapter up in there now. It's all gooped up, so hopefully it'll seal up all them big craters it's got everywhere. Well, chain it all up. So now we're going to go ahead and put the starter motor up in here. This here's a Prestolite starter motor. So I'm going to take the two nuts off over here so I can slip it in. And then once you get that all up in there, then you got to put this bracket right here, which goes right underneath these two bolts here, and that will support the starter. Looks like I'm going to hang one of these studs right here, and that will hold it in. And then we got to go ahead and put the battery cable up in there. Then we can put the battery box back on it. So, you know, I had to take all the battery box out to get access in here. So. There's no room. I'm going to make sure the cable stays in there too. So we'll go ahead and uh, continue. Okay, I got the starter motor bolting in now. Uh, we got the next problem is we got to put our support over here, which goes right down across these two bolt holes. The problem is we got this aftermarket heavy duty kicker cover on here, which takes Allen bolts. So what we do is we put a nut inside here where the Allen bolt would go. And then that allows you to put the bracket up on here and tighten up correctly without having to just buckle inside the hole. The other thing is we got to make sure that we have the right offset here so that the bracket sits square. So we're going to have to put a washer between the kicker cover here, that gap right there, and uh, our cover here. So I have to pull this back out right now. So then a couple of washers right here. Go ahead and stack this stuff up like this. So that goes in there like that. And then we stick this up in here where it belongs. And of course I could do the other one here also. So I'm gonna pull this one out. Do the same thing on this. Of 
course, I got the cables in the way here also. It's nice and fun to do with one hand. Yeah, it'll hang around long enough to do, I think. Flips around. These cables. And I'll flip it up in there. There we go. And we have a starter right there. Okay, now that sits in there flat. We are up against the starter back here, nice and even. So we don't bind up anything. You don't want to be binding on this stuff if you can avoid it. Uh, find my tools here. Okay, we'll to tighten this bolt up here a little bit. See how we're still bending the bracket a little bit. So if you look at it, you can see how the bracket is bent some. Right there. So we're going to do it to put two washers underneath those Allens to make that more flat. I could just tighten this up right here on the there and let it bend in, but I'm going to go ahead and put another washer under there just to make it better. I don't like having binds and anything if we can avoid it. So once we get that done, then we'll go ahead and put a lock nut here with a washer so it'll be well supported. So we're going to swap that out and then we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we got this all in there now. So you can see how it uh, is straight up in there now. We eliminate that dog leg. We got two washers under this one here on the back side and we got two underneath this one up here. Let's figure where I'm at. There we go. You see two washers right there. That stacks it out. So that puts it all in there nice and straight. And I also took put a new cable on the bike right here. So a new wire cable going down under here. Put a star washer under the underneath the nut there to hold it all together. And now we got plenty of room up under here for our clutch lever. It's not going to bind on that cable at all. So you want to make sure it's all up out of the way. It doesn't get in the way of anything. And then on the other side, we'll have to make sure this, when it comes out, it clears everything on this side, which is basically we got to keep it out of the starter ratchet or the starter, the shifter mechanism right here, and make sure it doesn't rub on it. The cable I just took out, you got a big rub mark almost halfway through it, so that's why I replaced this one. So we'll go ahead and bend this around so it makes sure it doesn't hit on the lever back there for the clutch. You can see how that's back there, and. We'll just make sure everything's got plenty of clearance. So all those small details like this is what matters. Hey, I get to go ahead and put the battery box in now. Okay, we got the battery box all back in here now. So you can see all the cables and everything all clear everything. So you see the starters all up under here. So everything fits up real nice and clean, just like I had it before, but it just sticks out a little bit further, it's all. So it only takes you a few minutes to take this battery box in and out, but it takes you a lot of time to try to work around it. So it's just one of those deals It's quicker just to take it apart, get back to where you get to it, and then come back and put it all back together. It's quicker. Okay, over here, and we're ready to put our starter jack shaft all up in here. You can see how this has all been bent. Nice light. So I'm going to have to go ahead and bend this all back once I get the starter piece back in there so I just take a pair of flat veil pliers like this and I'll bend this back up once we get the jack jacked here all up inside so right now this is pretty much ready to go back in I just need to put a bit of lubricant on here the shaft is pretty worn from that plate being all out of whack so let me go ahead and get this lubed up and we'll put this up in there I'm going to lube up this jack shaft here, and I see that this thing has been run without being on the outside supporting the shaft, so no outer primary cover. So you can see how it's all. Oops. Try to get where you can see here. 
you know, it's all chewed up here into the shaft. Also, misalignments of the shaft will cause that wear like that too. So this shaft is getting to be kind of crappy. It should be replaced, but we're going to reuse it again for one more time. So that's the way it goes with this stuff. So I'm going to uh, put some grease on here, slide up in there, and then bend this fork to fit. So let me go and get that done. Okay, we're going to try to put this, uh, this uh, electric starter fork back up where it belongs. So I'll show you a little bit how I do this. Uh, first thing I do is make sure that you are on the pulley. It's always an important part. Kind of see where this thing wants to sit at, and then you go ahead and bend it up into it. Okay, we're hitting on the side of the pulley up here. Yep. pop right in but this one here is not going to do that it's been bent so many times this arm here is in the wrong position so I'm going to come in here and bend it a little bit so let's see we need to go, uh, go the other direction with it Need to bend it inward slightly. Try that. And that is not going to work. Your levers are not lined up at all right now. So we're going to bend them a little bit. <clears throat> Try to get them along with each other. So it looks like it's twisted a little bit to up and down also. If that did the trick, get back in the hole. Go ahead and bend the top one in first this time. One right in. Make sure you do not have it down too far. You want to make sure that you, you have clearance up here in the arm. Come on, damn light. When you got this thing all the way in straight, you want to make sure this this arm is not pushing down on that pulley. You want to make sure you got some clearance up in there. Anyway, this one here we're gonna have to bend up. So now you can see how far out of whack we're on this one. Looks like I overcompensated a little bit. So I have to play around a little bit, get that where it's up in the pulley. Oh, there's the problem. I'm not even in the pulley on the top one. Yeah, that's a good job. See? Show you exactly how not to do it. Pretty good, huh? Alright, we'll try that again. Bend it up. And then this time. No. Where am I going wrong here? One problem is dark and I can't see. There we go. Just hit from the back side of it. Let's 
same same test. This time we'll connect, you see. Okay. Now you come there from the bottom. We bend the bottom one up. So let's look at that again. This time we are in the pulley. See how we're in it this time? And the bottom one right here. We'll just go ahead and bend that one up in there to match. We try to get these with our 180 apart. That way it pulls on it evenly when the startup bennix yanks on it. Or sorry, solenoid, excuse me. So. Okay, I want that just to go up. These levers are pretty flexible, so you can kind of bend them around the way you want them to be. good so there's what it looks like now Put both halves up on there and as it goes in and out you can see how it works nice and freely no binding so that's what you want to see and push it back in there where it belongs helps too so that's how it goes just like that the other thing I do is make sure that the snap ring and stuff is put in correctly up on the spring. Oh, let's see here what I got this thing at. Yep, it looks good. See it's going straight up and down, which is you want to see that so it can pivot. You get the spring in there and you got the cup in there correctly. So all of that looks like it's good. So should check that a little bit earlier, but oh well. This has a lot of clearance in here. Oh well. Alright, once that's all in there, we can go ahead and put our solenoid up in here. So this is our solenoid here. So we get our glue on gasket here. It looks like it already fell off. So this just sticks on with two-sided tape, which is obviously not working with a squat. Keeps giving me problems here, like it is. I'm gonna put a little bit of three bond sealer on that. And you gotta make sure you got your spring here, your spacer here, which goes right up against between here and the back of the primary cover. The spring obviously goes over the plunger. And we got our two bolts here that hold us all together. And of course, it goes on the bike like this here. Once assemble correctly, it goes on like this, right up in here, like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little lubricant on the shaft here because I don't want this plunger to be dry. And we'll pull up this sealer right here to hold that and we're going to put these on in there. And I'll probably pull a dab of Loctite on these too. So we're going to do all that. So, move this up a little bit higher so you can see. And there's a whole a hell of a lot of clearance in this stuff as you can tell when you're working on these. Be able to see what I'm doing there. All right. Go back and get my three and my sealer here. Now, I only <coughs> I only glued the gasket to the solenoid. I don't like sticking it to the inner primary. That way when we take the thing off you don't have to fight it so much. So we just put a little bit of sealer right on there. Wherever the damn camera's at. There it is. And you go and stick this on there like that. That'll hold it. Oop. So it's all stuck in there now. Grease, rotate up the plunger here. Take the spring, do the same thing, put a little glue on it. That way, if there's any binding, everything's lubricated. Doesn't need a lot, just a little bit. Okay.
finger off. And pull back a little bit there. A little bit too close. Okay, now the fun part here is putting this in and holding the spacer and the bolts all in there with your fingers you can't get to. So first thing I have to put that in. Usually what I do is I put the top bolt in first because it's easiest to get to. Go like that. And I forgot to put my Loctite on there and of course it's on the other side of the room as usual. Okay, we use a little bit lighter duty Loctite. It's a little bit less than medium. You want to put you don't want to make them so hard to get out that you break the bolts out trying to get them out. A lot of times I'll put both of these in right now and hold them with my two fingers like this. Get good access. Get it out of the way. I'll just push it in there. Get the top bolt started first. fingers and get the bottom one going. Okay. I come in there with my quarter drive ratchet. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and pull it on down. I like to hold the cylinder all over against the case and just bring the bolts down by hand. We don't have to worry about anything binding up in there. And you see how it pulls in evenly like you want it to. If it doesn't do that when you tighten down the screws, then something is wrong. What we're looking at right here is I'll go ahead and unscrew this a little bit so you can see what I just was hoping you would see, but not because the angle is bad. Okay, you see how, the, how it pulls away real quickly? So as you bring these bolts in with a ratchet, you want to see that seal and they pull in nice and straight just like that and get a good bite against that seal. See how it just pulls right up in there like that? Now if it's not doing that, then you have something that's bent, so you need to go in there and straighten out the solenoid bracket. And it pulls in evenly like that. You want it to be nice and flat like that so you know it's good and sealed and straight. And then this here should still work really freely like this, which it does. And just make sure all that works. Now, as long as you don't have anything connected to your solenoid, you can do that. Once it's connected to your power here, if you do this and engage it, it'll rip your fingers off and maybe do a little bit of damage. I also like to make sure that it engages in a starter on the back side. See, this is the way it works freely and this is the way it turns it. So you make sure the starter is all engaged on the other side, which it is. Okay. We've got our battery cable up under here. And this is our wire that goes over here to here. And we want to make sure this stays off of stuff back in here that rotates and moves. So this cover here moves when you shift. So you don't want to rub it on that. You don't want to be rubbing up on that bolt right there for the lower mount. Because that would tend to rattle against it and eat on it. And obviously the clutch cable over here, you want to make sure it's off of that. So you got to check all these things to make sure they're clear. So usually what I do is I kind of bend them a little bit, like that. And that way you get, make sure things are bent up out of the way as much as you can. So it's going to be a two-minute operation doing that. Now this here is our cover that goes over all this stuff. So that just pokes in like that. And when you're all done, this just slips over the top. I also put one, got to do one more cable here. So here's our main, our main battery cable right here. It's way too close. So this is a big long one here. So I got to see how they had this thing rooted. It thing's about double the stock length. So maybe they're going over the top of the bike like that. Make two laps around your waist and goes the battery. That might be how they did had it planned. So I'll go ahead and work on that. Figure out how I'm gonna do all that. So I'm gonna do that off camera so I can just kind of see where it has to be. Okay, I got this one kind of hand bent up out of the way here. 
we need some light to see what I just did. So you can see I got it bent up where it kind of clears everything. I'll do a little fine tuning once I get this thing all up in there. And I was looking at this cable right here. Come on, light. And you can see how they had this thing rubbing on different things already. See all these big gouges and grooves in here. This is the kind of stuff that happens when you force it against things you don't want to be forced against. Especially sharp edges. So this will cause shorts. And when you short out a cable this big, it starts fires. Because you're not going to drain that battery down that quickly. See this side over here, we don't have those marks on it. That's the battery side. So however they had this thing rooted, it wasn't a bad way of doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this thing out and see what I can do to make it so it doesn't do this. If you're going to have to have this rubbing against something, then make sure you put like an old oil line over the top of it or some corrugated tubing or some of this asphalt style covering. You know, put some layers on here so you got something to wear against because it will burn your bike down. So I'm going to play this a little bit. Okay. Just kind of laid this cable out right on top of the other one and I don't really see if you do everything right there's plenty of room in here and it's definitely long enough so I don't see why there's a problem with hitting on everything. So I did the kind of same thing I put like an S curve in the cable to bend it up around. Now these nuts here were loose on the solenoid and you can't really put a wrench on here because they're too damn close to the cover. So what I do is I go here with an open end 5 eighths and I put a wrench over here and I rotate that. So you kind of get an idea how to do that. Here, let me flip this around. It's really awkward to get in here because there's no room, but basically you go like this and you can kind of force them in there and get them tight. So you're not supposed to use your wrenches like this, but I do it quite a bit on different things. It allows you to do stuff you're not supposed to do. Okay, once we got that in there, then it's just a matter of getting these cables all hooked up. You know, you're on the wrong side to see all this, but oh well. And where is my... Let me go grab my tools and we'll get right back on this. Alright, got my tools back. Now this here is the nut they want us to use, which is the 5 ace thin ass nut that some kind of metric thing. Here's a standard 3 8 nut. Oop. Was a standard 3 8 nut. Went across the room. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the standard ones. Damn, this focus sucks. And that way I can run a regular wrench on the solenoid wire. And I can still get access to the 5 8 wrench to try to unscrew it if, it gets, if everything gets loose and jammed up on there. What you don't want to do is put Loctite on these because those posts inside the solenoid come loose all the time. And once you Loctite it, you're screwed. Good luck on getting them apart. Alright, where did my nut go? Okay, now we still got these little cheap ass washers here. We're going to use lock washers, but we'll use those. Okay, I'm going to put all three wires through the hole here. Run them through in the order they go through, so that's top, top, bottom, bottom. It's easier to figure out when you're putting this all together. This bottom one's going to have to bend up at a real heavy angle because of the way the post is on here. There's also a mounting bolt right there to jam up on everything also to kind of try to have a built-in short. Thing to have. Okay. Oops, long wrench. There's that one. Top post. That one we got good access to it because they made that post right. All these solenoids I sell you these days are made for automotive use, so they're not made right for Harleys. The original ones were made to clear all these wires. This, the 
This stuff is not made to do that. So this one here, they had a star washer. And a lock washer. So the star washer first. And of course the lock washer I dropped on the floor. Who knows where the hell it went to. A star washer does absolutely nothing when you put it on first. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse this. The wire doesn't want to come back off. So I'll put the wire on first, then the star washer. And then the nut will have something to hit against. It'll hit against the star washer. See what's going to happen over here. So I'm trying to keep my cables up high over here out of the way. So we want to make sure that we keep them in that kind of an angle. It's hard to see, but there's a bolt head right underneath this cable over there, which we don't want to be rubbing on because it's the ground. So this cable is going to wind up being bent up. It's going to be bent up anyway when I tighten this nut up. So let me go ahead and do that. I can show you that piece. And you want to make sure you don't force these too much because it's very easy to break these solenoid covers. They're just bake a light material, plastic material. So very easy to damage them. And there's plenty of torque. Top one, you can put it right next to the other one, so I'll do it last. And you want to make sure you don't break off the small post when you're tightening the top one down. Okay, and all this just slides up around here. This damn coil bracket's right there, so it's pretty tight. Getting the rubber in there. There it goes. Definitely a tight squeeze there. Okay. I'm gonna get an idea what it looks like now. So I brought this. I brought the top cable down next to the bottom one and I'll bend it around a little bit more. So you want to keep it off that stud way up in there. You can see it very well, but that bolt right up in there, which is our lowered mount. I'll make sure the cables are off of there and make sure it's off of this so they don't rub on this. This all looks pretty good. I'll just give it a little more bending. If you bend it toward the primary cover, it keeps the keeps clearances on everything. Go. So you can see it's got good clearance up under there. You can see I got S curves going around. And there you go. You can see it's above the. It's actually a gap between here. It's hard to see it, but it's a gap. And then your green wire right here, you just got to make sure it's not laying on anything either. So it's this wire right here. All right. So now you go on the other side and we look at our battery cables. You want to make sure they're got plenty of clearance down in there from the clutch lever being here. You can see there's plenty of clearance. So this one here is right here, and then this is going to be our positive cable right here. It'll go up to our battery. Now, the only thing I got to make sure is I got to make sure it does not rub down here in the starter bolt right here because that will cause a short too. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. So I might have to do something slightly different. I'm thinking like maybe going on the other side of this cable here, take this cable off, put it on the inside, and put that one back on it, and I'll 
it definitely will not rub on that then so I think I'll just go ahead and do that right now because that's a lot better way of doing it than what it has right now and it looks like everything else has got plenty of clearance up in there so I'll go ahead and swap that around right now okay I got the cable all bent to uh, mount on the inside of the other one there's some light so now this was held right there against the starter motor so you can go ahead and bend this all around up here and it doesn't it doesn't interfere with anything else it keeps it retained so that was just an easy quick fix and then also you got to make sure that it clears the arm up under here so they get the arm the clutch arm right here and you see how it's not going to hit that cable at all it's being held with a stop by the cable up there so that should be a pretty good fix. That's about where that lever sits anyway. It might come back another sixteenth of an inch, but that's about where it sits. So now we got good access to all our positive terminals up over here. This is our positive wire also. And so we'll worry about getting the battery in later. So anyway, just rooting all makes a big difference. So you just gotta pay attention and if you see something you don't like, fix it. So that's how we do that. And before you button up the other side, make sure you double check all those cables again over there.